this coast is such a place of raw and tremendous power where the world's biggest ocean comes up against the land, but it's also a nurturing place, the place that has sustained my ancestors and sustains all of us to this day. We rely on the bounty that the upwelling of the Pacific brings to our ecosystem. It's easy to come to this beautiful place and get the sense that because it's beautiful, everything is as it should be. But unfortunately, we inherit an ecosystem that is out of balance. And in large part, that's because of the absence of one particular animal, the sea otter. Since time before human memory, the people of this coast, my ancestors, shared our waters with sea otters. My name is Peter Hatch, and I'm a Siletz tribal member of Hannes Kuss and Sayusla descent. Stories from our ancestors talk about a time when the boundaries between what we now think of as the human world and the animal world were a lot more fluid than they are today. There's an old story about a young Kuss woman who married into the sea otter people and went to live out to sea and established a connection between us human people and the animal people that carries down through the generations. That relationship benefits both of us. Fundamentally, a lot of these beliefs boil down to trying to instill an appreciation for the resources that sustain us. By eating the sea urchins, sea otters keep them in check and help our kelp forests thrive. Modern ecology has been catching up to those ancestral understandings, those interconnections that people who've lived in this place have always known are there. In the different languages and dialects up and down the Oregon coast, there are at least six different words for sea otter. Near what we now call Depot Bay is a place that has been known to local Tillamook folks as Asihigal Shantish, which means Otter Rock, and today is known in English as Otter Rock Marine Reserve. Down south is a rocky point that Dani people have always known as Khashtashse, which again just means Sea Otter Rock. Today it's still known in English as Otter Point. These place names and these stories are all we have left of Oregon's original sea otter population. The last Oregon sea otter that we know of was killed around 1910. The slaughter of Oregon sea otters occurred in parallel with the catastrophes that were affecting indigenous people of this region in the 19th century. But between the wars, the disease, the loss of land, the loss of life, the boarding schools, termination policy, and just the pure stigma around being Indian, it's a very real possibility that Oregon's tribes could have been wiped out completely. Sometimes we treat this very near history as ancient, but my great-grandmother, Hattie, was the only survivor among nine brothers and sisters. My grandfather grew up around people who had been there at the signing of the treaties in the 1850s. My dad's generation grew up as members of a tribe that, in the eyes of the government, no longer existed. These historical forces shape who our families are and how many of us there are, even to this day. Despite it all, we survived and Oregon sea otters didn't, and that relationship was broken. Back in the late 90s, my dad, Dave Hatch, was looking for a name for a small boat that we'd built together, and in a Chinook dictionary happened across the term Ilaka for sea otter. As my dad started to dig deeper, he started to realize how much that all Oregonians stood to gain by restoring sea otters to our ocean. That led down a path of research, activism, and connecting people that formed the Ilaka Alliance. 
After his passing in 2016, we got back together, a group of us that had been touched by his work, to make something meaningful out of that. It was time to try to bring them back. Today we face tremendous uncertainties about the future of the Oregon coast. There are many threats and in so many ways we're always on defense. But this project is the chance to do something proactive. We have the power to heal this place where we live. It's not about grasping for what little we have left. It's about trying to restore something that we've lost and thereby create a better future. We have a tremendous effort ahead and many people that need to be at the table as decisions are made. But there's hope here, there's potential here, and many people who have heard about this project have met us with tremendous good spirit and have offered their help as we move forward. Long after I'm gone, I hope that my descendants will still be able to go to these rivers on this coast to gather mussels and to fish for salmon, and that when they're out there offshore, they'll see Ilaka. We're not just restoring a species, we're bringing back a relative. Mm -hmm.